So Lisa's a CEO and co-founder of Cooley Cooley. And they're not walking out on you. I think they're just hungry. No problem. <laughs> OK. So for everybody who's going out to get tacos, you're missing Moringa. Just letting you know. Um, so I'm Lisa. I'm the founder of Cooley Cooley. Um, and I want to start by telling you a little story. So about four years ago, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Niger, West Africa, where there are no taco trucks. Um, and I started to feel really weak and really tired all the time. And I realized that like 18 million children across West Africa feel every day. I was beginning to experience early signs of malnutrition. And then someone in my village told me about this plant called Moringa. Has anyone here ever heard of Moringa before? A couple? Have you heard of it because of us? Yeah? OK, great. Um, so Moringa is one of the most nutritious plants in the world. It's packed with calcium, iron, vitamin A, and vitamin C. And it's a complete protein, like meat or quinoa. Um, and it's actually more nutritious than America's new favorite superfood, kale. Um, and so I, I got together with a few friends when I got back from the Peace Corps and started thinking about, you know, how could I get this plant into the hands of more people who needed it? Because the women in my village weren't really eating Moringa. Um, they didn't really see it as a valuable crop. There was no market for it. There was no reason for them to grow it. Um, but I came back to the U.S. and started thinking about if I could turn this plant into the next superfood, maybe I could find a way to support these women in my Peace Corps village who I'd grown to love. So, fast forward about four years later, um, and we started a company called Cooley Cooley that we're rapidly making Moringa into, quote unquote, the new kale. Um, so Yahoo recently said, the next superfood is here. It's called Moringa. Uh, Time Magazine wants you all to forget kale and try this real superfood. Um, and Dr. Oz has been telling people to re-energize their day with Moringa. So gram for gram, uh, Moringa has more calcium, iron, and B vitamins than kale. Like I said, it's arguably the most nutritious plant in the world. Um, and we're the first company to market with this product. So last year, we launched on the market um, with our delicious fruit and nut bars. If you haven't been by our little booth over in the left hand, your right hand corner over there, go by and check us out. All vegan, gluten free, raw, um, no more than six ingredients. And then this superfood ingredient, Moringa, gives you about a quarter of your daily calcium, iron, and vitamin A. So there's nothing else like it on the market. Um, and we successfully piloted these bars. Um, we went from zero to about 200 stores uh, in less than a year. And now we're looking to grow and expand and develop some new products. So what Moringa brings to the market? Um, Moringa really provides all of the natural ingredients that active people need to thrive. So the supplement industry is about a $38 billion industry, growing at 7% annually. And there's been a really interesting trend recently um, with a lot more women purchasing supplements. And often they're not purchasing supplements to grow muscle, but purchasing supplements for wellness and vitality. Uh, Moringa fits really well into this market. Um, it's really high in calcium, iron, and folic acid, which are the three key nutrients that uh, women need to thrive. Write that down if you didn't know that already. Um, and as an all-natural leaf, Moringa fulfills a growing desire for real food products. I don't know if any of you guys saw the scandal with GNC recently, as covered by the New York Times. People are tired of supplements that are just sort of, you know, rice protein covered in green something. <laughs> but for us, we also think a lot about what Moringa brings to the world. Um, so in the past year, we've been able to put about $50,000 back into the hands of rural women farmers in West Africa. We've planted 60,000 Moringa trees, um, and we've worked with our partners to do a lot to really improve nutrition locally. Um, and we want to scale up this model and take it to other places as well. 
One of the cool things about Moringa, it's the fastest growing tree in the world. So you can actually plant this tree and harvest it within about two months. If you don't believe me, look it up. Um, and it, it's drought resistant as well. It grows really well in hot, dry climates, places like Niger, Haiti, India, places that have really high rates of malnutrition. Um, it's also a high value crop. Uh, the farmers we work with make more from selling Moringa than they make from selling millet or even high value crops like coffee and cacao. Lastly, it supports women farmers. A lot of people ask me, you know, why do you guys work with women? Um, well, Moringa is naturally grown by women all over the African continent. Men often grow the corn and the millet, um, but Moringa is sort of reserved for women. Um, and a lot of studies show when you invest in women, you invest in the entire community. So now I would love to answer any questions. Okay, hands up high. First of all, you need to go grab some before they're all gone. Um, do you plan to sell this product outside the US? Yeah, so currently we're in about 200 stores across the West Coast. Our expansion plans um, are to saturate California and the Pacific Northwest, which we did sort of last year. And now we're looking to start expanding nationally. I think we really want to get our, our foothold in the US market before we go internationally. Answered all your questions? Are you raising money, Lisa? Sorry. Hi. Is it um, safe for pregnant women? Uh, yeah, so one of the cool things about Moringa is it actually promotes lactation. Um, so there are a lot of women that use it um, right, before, right after they have children. Where are your production facilities? Yeah, so our Moringa powder is produced entirely in northern Ghana. Our bars are produced in the Pacific Northwest. We have a co-manufacturer there. Are the, uh, are the bars sweetened? And if so, how are you approaching sugar? It's a great question. Um, sugar is sort of the new fat in the world right now. Um, people are very, very wary of sugar. So we have about a gram of agave that we add just to kind of hold the bars together. There is some natural sugar from the fruit, so it's pretty comparable with what you would find in a Laura bar, any other fruit and nut-based bar, kind bars as well. Um, so how do um, the people in the African village um, consume Moringa? I mean, obviously, Kuli Kuli bars don't exist there yet. Yeah, so our name Kuli Kuli comes from this popular West African snack that's made with peanuts and Moringa. So we kind of made the, the American almond version of that. I don't think you mentioned whether it's organic or not, but I was just curious to know, is um, there any pesticides that are used in growing these trees? That is a great question. Um, we just got our organic certification last week, actually, so we're really excited about that. It's been a long process. Anyone on this side? You said the crop is drought resistant. Is there any plan to grow it in California? So there are a couple of people that have tried. The, the thing about Moringa is it grows really well in subtropical regions. So even in hot places like the Central Valley in California or Arizona, you still get frost. Um, so it doesn't grow very well in North America. It really is a, a tropical plant. How are you controlling the supply chain? Yeah, so we work uh, very closely with a nonprofit in northern Ghana, um, and we're also working on expanding to Haiti with another nonprofit there. Um, we don't control them in the sense that we don't we don't own the cooperative, um, but we do purchase the majority, pretty much all of the moringa that they export, um, and we do pay the best price. So, you know, it's, it's really a relationship that we've built over time. 
And you said, you mentioned the fruit of the tree. Yeah. So, so do you use the fruit as well as the leaves, or do you use everything? So or? we use the leaves, actually. So it's the dried, powdered leaves. Um, the fruit, there is a, a seed pod. It's, it's often eaten in, in India. They uh, use it in soups like sambar, um, and they call it the drumstick tree. But we really focus on the leaves. The seeds are actually used in a lot of French cosmetics. If you ever look at the back of like your lotions or shampoos, um, some of the, the fancy French ones are often have moringa oil in them from the seeds. I think that's it. Cooley Cooley. Lisa, thank you so much. Excellent work. <laughs>